Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. I'm sure I have seen some of your sleepy faces on Wednesday. I was one myself sleepy. I didn't really intend to watch the results of the elections, but around midnight I checked it, you know, and it became exciting. <laughs> I stayed till three o'clock, you know, and there was a miserable day afterwards. And you know, the result of the election destroyed completely my home of today. Because I was just about to announce the end of time, the second coming of Jesus, and it seems it is postponed, it, you know? So, just to be serious about the church teaching. Looking at the context of the gospel, we have to be watchful to discern between true and false claims. You don't have to go anywhere to look for Christ. He announced it. Christ coming will be like lightning. You, you cannot miss it. So when Jesus returns in his final glory, it will be a visible cosmic event, a public and abrupt coming. You can do nothing about it. You cannot stop it. You cannot accelerate it. And we cannot even imagine it. This is something beyond our human imagination, something which only God can produce to impress us again. So when is this going to happen? How is it going to happen? And what are the signs? All these legitimate questions. And all these questions were answered by Jesus even if he didn't give us the specific time. But he gave enough to have some glimpse of what is coming. Just uh, that you see in the Gospel of Matthew is written that the sun, moon and stars are going to have problems. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Just when you go there, be careful with your interpretation. We are dealing with the disintegration of the universe, but remember that we are reading scripture and scripture has many levels. There is not just one level. And just to show you something, I will give you interpretation coming from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis. Joseph the patriarch tells his father Jacob about his dream. Joseph that time was a teenager. And he said to his father this, this is what I have seen. Behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars, we have more than 11 stars, were bowing down to me. So he was not talking about the planets or the universe. And he was understood because his father Jacob rebuked Joseph very strongly. He was feeling being insulted. And why, why he was insulted? Just see the interpretation, how they understood uh, the dream very correctly. Shall I, your father, the sun, and your mother, the moon, and your brothers, the stars, shall we indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? I give you one very practical family advice. If you have such dream, don't share it with your family. <laughs> they might kill you or sell you in slavery, as they did to Joseph, because they originally wanted to kill him, and then what kind of mercy came to them, they sold him in slavery. And then when Joseph became a prince of Egypt, somebody very important, they did it. They bowed to the ground in front of Joseph in Egypt. So the dream was absolutely true. But look another interpretation. The sun will be darkened. The father of the family will lose the sense of his fatherhood. That's bad news for any country, even for America. His role in society as well as in the family will be darkened. So pray for the fathers that they will take their role in the family, in the society. The moon will not give its light. You know that moon is just reflecting light. So the, and the moon will be turned into blood. You know, I'm quite aware that many of you have very close, if not direct connections, with the Kennedy Space Center. 
you know exactly that moon is a rock. So how can a rock be covered with blood? Once more, the mother loses the sense of her motherhood, covered with blood, of abortion. It's very dangerous where we are. So the children are completely lost. The children are confused. They fall from the sky, no values, no religion, no respect. Just see what is happening in some towns on the streets. No wonder that the younger generation is somehow lost. If the family disintegrates, everything is going wrong. And we have arrived. We are already there. We see the downfall of the family and growing social chaos with the loss of the younger generation from the church. If you don't teach them, how could they know? If people don't practice their faith, how the others could be introduced? It's always actual topic to share your life, to pass your faith. However, in the history of salvation, the history of the world, three signs were missing up to now. And this gospel, as Jesus said, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness into all nations. And then shall the end come. This is what Matthew uh, recorded in his gospel. Up to now, never happening that all languages, all dialects, they would have the New Testament translated into their language. I witnessed one of the last, if not the last language in Zambia when I was there. They were translating New Testament for Chimambwe. This was the vanishing language. It was a side language, minority language in the diocese and some Polish priests, they made the team and they were translating the New Testament into this language. And they were asking Bishop to print uh, 10 or 20,000 of these copies and, and Bishop said 20,000. And they said, why? We don't have said one. It will be printed twice, the first and the last time. He didn't want to have the, another language. You know how difficult it is translating English and, and Spanish and so on. It's much more work, much more complicated. So that's, it doesn't exist any language that the gospel was not preached. It never happened before the 20th century. In the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, one third of the stars, leaders, will fall from the sky. The great apostles in the church, the false teachings in the church. And if you look just around yourself, you don't have to be really Sherlock Holmes to find something. Many of the people are preaching very perverse uh, teachings and they don't go together with the catechism of the Catholic Church at all. And then how you know it's wrong. It's not the teaching of the Church. And still Jesus gave us something else. In order to help us to understand, to have some glue, Jesus gave us a parable. From the fig tree learn its lesson. So, what is so special about the fig tree? The fig tree is the symbol of the house of Israel. And Israel was replanted and started to blossom in 1948. It never happened to any other nation. They are the chosen people, they are included in the plan of salvation and their appearance on the political map of the universe. It's a significant sign. Israel has been dispersed among the nations for almost 2,000 years. All of a sudden, against all odds, they were able to recreate a nation. You might not like them, you might disagree with what they are doing, but they are there. The sign is there. So, to make a biblical statement, the summer of God's salvation is near. The harvest time is near. In Israel, the fig tree is the sign that the summer has come. And the year 1948 was a warning to us that the end of the era is upon us. So, keep your fresh grace in your hearts because we all need it. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And the cloud is always a symbol of God's mysterious presence. When you are using incense around the altar on the feastly days, when you are using incense around the coffin on the funeral, that this incense, this cloud, should remind us about this mysterious presence of God, that we are in His actual presence. So Christ, the King of the universe, will show Himself at the right moment, at the right time, in His own way, which we cannot predict. 
and it will be to the consternation of the nations, to those who oppose him, not to those who are embracing him, who are welcoming him, who are his disciples, followers, or just his children. So don't get confused on this issue. But today gospel says, before all this happens, however they will cease and persecute you, they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. You will be hated by all because of my name. And this was my point. It seems like some kind of global persecution or rejection of Christianity. And I'm not sure if you are aware how close it was. Hillary That's Clinton one of the proofs. was speaking at the Women in the World Summit on April 23rd. And we've got video of the statement, and we'll play it in a second, but this is what she said. She said, far too many women are denied access to reproductive health care and safe childbirth. And laws don't count for much if they're not enforced. Rights have to exist in practice, not just on paper. Laws have to be backed up with resources and political will. And deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. Okay, so she says religious beliefs have to be changed. Okay, i.e. Christian beliefs have to be changed. Take a look. But far too many women are still denied critical access to reproductive health care and safe childbirth. All the laws we've passed don't count for much if they're not enforced. Rights have to exist in practice, not just on paper. Laws have to be backed up with resources and political will and deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. Safe childbirth? I never heard that it was denied to any woman. And what abortion has to do with safe childbirth? It's surely not safe, it's not healthy, and it's deadly for a child. And the WikiLeaks reported there are groups, so don't stop praying. There are groups who want to destroy church from inside and they are quite organized in details. So don't lose your sensitiveness and this support for the church. We desperately need it. Yeah, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And it's a fact, it's his statement. Teach the children, teach the young generation, pass your faith, and there will be always sign of hope as we received sign of hope for this election. Christianity is being chipped away at in this country. In this country. It's being chipped away at. And I'm not going to let it happen. Do you know I was with... I was with a whole room full, like 50 uh, pastors, ministers, great people, some of whom I knew pretty well and some I don't. And I said to him, let me ask you a question. How many Christians, evangelicals, but just Christians, do we have in this country? And they were saying maybe 250 million, maybe 260 million. I said, so that's more than we have women. It's more than we have men. It's by far the biggest group. Then why aren't you banding together and getting the kinds of things you want? When, When people talk about we need a temporary ban on Muslims until we find out what is going on here, okay? There is total outrage. When people talk about Christians and Christianity, there's no outrage. There's no outrage. I said, let me ask you, and these are great believers, these are great people, these are strong people, smart people. I said, why is it, and I think I really found something that's very important for all of us, why is it that you people don't have a stronger lobby? And during Lyndon Johnson's regime, I will call it, because that's sort of what it was, if you think about it, but during his term as president, they passed something where the tax deduction is under siege if they do anything that's a little bit off, okay? So they're gonna lose tax-exempt status, right? And I said, wait a minute, that's right, that's the answer. I figured, you know, I'm a pretty smart guy, I figure things out pretty quickly. So as soon as they mentioned it, I said, that's it. Because I said then, so the man walking, I was in Trump Tower, I pointed down to the sidewalk, there were people walking on the sidewalk. I said, then those people walking on the sidewalk 
are more powerful than you people in the clergy, the pastors, the ministers, the priests, the people in the clergy. They're more powerful. They said, that's right. I said, not going to happen anymore. We're going to get rid of that thing. I want Christianity to have a strong flavor. Why did we ever pass a thing like that? And, and it's so important. I mean, really, they've shut Christianity down. And these are great people, but they're afraid to do. For instance, some people came up to me, Mr. Trump, I love you. You're the best. You're going to be the greatest leader. You're going to be, I want to endorse you. I'm endorsing you, but I'm not allowed to do it publicly because if I do it publicly, I may lose for the church the tax exempt status. So they're really being silenced and we can't let that happen. We can't let that. Happen. I don't care about the endorsement. They're really being silenced. We can't let that happen. We're not going to let it happen, and we're going to get that thing repealed. And think of the power we have over the Democrats, over the Republicans. I mean, the power is, the power is incredible. So we're going to get that taken care of, and we're going to be back. And I'll tell you what, come Christmas time, we're going to all be in these department stores that don't have Merry Christmas, and we're going to see Merry Christmas right in those stores, right? They don't put it up anymore. We're going to see Merry Christmas at the department stores again, folks. You goes into these stores, you don't even see Merry Christmas anymore. You say, why? Why? The store owners and the big companies, especially like Macy's, which is extremely a very disloyal company. But these big companies, they don't want to use it because it's not politically correct. It's going to be not politically correct not to put it up. You watch. But I don't know if you are aware of this. You go on the internet, you can find it very quickly. Did you know this? Uh, Dr. James Dobson, the founder of the Focus on the Family and Family Talk, says Donald Trump has recently given his life to Jesus Christ and is a baby Christian urging believers to pray for him. <laughs> that, that, that's the Protestant theology, you know, it's not uh, accurate, but I will extend it. Let us pray for him that he become a Catholic. <laughs> That's nothing wrong. I mean, it happens. I, I, I was not here, you know, so I didn't see it, but what I hear from the people uh, when Newt Gingrich became a Catholic, he's like a different man from this world they are talking what he was before. A few years ago, the prime minister in UK, Cameron, he became a Catholic. So, I mean, that is not something that is um, totally impossible. So, pray for him. We can take this uh, as the solemn warning from the church. As this time is a bit postponing, we still have to pray. If you refuse to listen, nothing will change. And Jesus gave this. If they have listened to Moses, they will listen to Christ. If they have listened to the Bible, then when somebody comes from the dead, they will be convinced, they will believe. But if not, if they have listened to Christ, they will listen to the bishops, they will listen to the priests, they will listen to the church magisterium, they will care about the church teaching. If they don't listen now, they will not listen to anybody when it's too late. But this is one of the invitations for today. This is the message directly to the church, the body of Christ, the followers of Jesus. Watch therefore and pray. Another from today's gospel, by your perseverance, you will save your lives. If you don't watch, then you might just perish, be on the right road in the wrong direction. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. So keep your spiritual life alive. Keep this fresh grace in your hearts because it's needed, it's desperately needed to be saved. Because then, if you have this grace, if you have this devotion, maybe it will be so short. Lord, save me. And this would be enough to be happy for the rest of our eternity. <laughs>